The matter that I'd like to draw your attention on is about the Supreme Court's order yesterday on the Antriksh Devas issue. You are aware that uh, Antriksh had approached the NCLT asking for liquidation of uh, Devas. And that was sometime early 2021, in January of 2021, post which the final order of the NCLT was issued in May 2021, which ordered a liquidation of the, NCL, uh, of the Devas which the Devas went on an appeal to the NCLAT. The NCLAT also gave its order in September of 2021, upholding the order issued by NCLT that it should be indeed liquidated. Post that, Devas again went on an appeal to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court, after hearing both the sides, gave its order yesterday, upheld the NCLT and NCLAT order for liquidating Devas. The Supreme Court has actually given a very comprehensive order. And in fact, I'd like to draw a few of their observations as a part of their uh, judgment. But before that, I want to just broadly mention to you what this is all about. I'm sure many of you all who've been watching this whole process since 2005, when Antariksh entered into an agreement with Devas, and that itself became a controversy during the UPA government. Agreement was signed during UPA in 2005. And post the agreement, it took six full years for the UPA themselves to cancel the order in 2011. And even when they canceled it, glimpses of what was completely wrong against national security, that it was a fraud upon the people of India, a fraud on the treasury of India, and a fraud against the country, was obvious. Several of you in the media have covered it then. And it was therefore, sometime in Feb February 2011, that the UPA government itself thought it fit to cancel this order, cancel this agreement between Devas and Antariksh. There are several statements given in that context by the Congress ministers then. And not to forget that that year, just a couple of months before, the cancellation of this, a sitting minister was arrested in the UPA government. And that was also a big scandal. So the cancellation comes in the sequence of one scandal, minister gets arrested, the next scandal, where the agreement between two private, uh, Antariksh, which was part of the ISRO's own commercial wing, with Devas, which was a private entity, and giving away for pittance a rare S-band spectrum, which is only used largely by defense forces. So this kind of a selling of primary endowments, whether it is under the soil as mineral wealth or wavelengths, or satellites, 
a spectrum ban than anything else. Giving it away to the private parties and making a deal out of it marks the feature of the Congress governments. And this today, after nearly 10, 11 years of struggle, we've had Supreme Court come out with a comprehensive order. Just a proof of how repeatedly the Congress party, when in power, misuses its position. Allows blatant selling of resources of the government, resources of the people of India for pittance. The states, statements given then clearly tell you how brazen this attempt was. The cabinet didn't even know about such a brazen agreement whereby 90% of yet to be launched satellites were already agreed and given away to private pro pro parties. The GSLV-6 and GSLV-6A were not even launched yet. The cabinet hadn't even approved it yet. But 90% of these two satellites' utilization was already through an agreement given away to a private party. In 2011, in an interview to a television channel, the telecom minister then, and this is Sri Kapil Sibal, said that the cabinet was not even aware of the details of Antariksh Deva's deal. ISRO is something which comes under the PMO. Dr. Manmohan Singh in February 24, 2011 says, there was no question of Prime Minister's office being asked to approve this deal. It never came to that level. Unquote. And it further says only the launch of two satellites came to the cabinet. It did come to the Space Mission Commission. But it, that is Deva's Antarix deal, was not mentioned even in the cabinet note that there was a specific commitment under this agreement. The Prime Minister clarifies. What did Devas offer? That itself shows how blatant this agreement was and that it was a fraud. Just listen, today we have the benefit of hindsight, 10 years later, we know what are the kind of services which we are getting through telecom and what we may or may not get through the satellite, which is not in the reach of everybody. Devas offered a bouquet of services known as Deva services through a device called Deva's device in a hybrid mode of transmission, which is a combination of satellite and terrestrial transmission, and which is called Deva's technology, but none of which existed when they signed the agreement nor existed when the agreements were cancelled and probably to an extent doesn't exist even today. That's where the fraud begins. And the CAG, which comes out with a report in 2012, says, first of all, these are not within the scope of the SATCOM, which is Satellite Communication Policy. And approving of digital multimedia broadcasting or direct-to-home broadcasting, all these services are the prerogative of the government of India. And no any one particular commercial entity belonging to any department could give that away. But Antariksh gave it away, did not tell the cabinet. And it went on. To, till today, becoming a big 
legal tussle. Of course, the CBI, since 2015, has got cases going on under the PCA, Prevention of Corruption Act. The ED has also come in with a inf first information report in 2015. Some assets were attached. I'm just very quickly moving to the fact that internationally, too, there are now arbitral awards coming up. Just to highlight what this greed of the UPA has done, they may have cancelled the order in 2011, but Government of India under Prime Minister Modi is fighting in every court to make sure that this fraud doesn't get away. Do you want to know the irony of how this has been handled by the government? In 2011, when the whole thing was cancelled, an arbitration set course, meaning Devas went with the ICC saying cancellation was wrong, they should be made good for it. In July 2011, they were asked to appoint, government Antariksh was asked to appoint an arbitrator from its side. Devas would do it from their side. Arbitration will go on. Antariksh did not even appoint an arbitrator, continuing this fraud. Government of India did not tell Antariksh that he should appoint an arbitrator and go fight. They did not. They just kept off saying, whatever happens, let's see. Having cancelled it, they did not appoint an arbitrator to fight for the right and defend the government of India. Did they leave it there? In August 2011, again they were reminded, appoint somebody for this arbitration. And they were given 21 days only to appoint an arbitrator to fight for it. So that the government of India doesn't have to pay for having cancelled and rightly cancelled it. Even the 21 days went away, they did not appoint an arbitrator, which means what couldn't be given through the deal, through arbitration and everything else, the fraud that was perpetrated on us would get paid in the name of damages. That arbitration award had to come in 2015 after Modi's government comes and we take it up all in seriousness and fight from then. Even worse, even in 2011, for having given away the S band, which is a very sensitive band, which is a spectrum band, which is very rarely used and by defense only, for having given away the S band for a throwaway price, they did not even invoke national security when the arbitration began. It's an outrageous case whereby a rare endowment of the people of India, the S-band spectrum, the satellite which goes up, are all given away to petty cronies of the Congress party. Some of them were abroad, some probably within this country. And half-hearted attempts to bring justice to this case were taken up. I told you how they did not appoint an arbitrator. Even after reminder, they did not invoke national security as an important clause. That led to Devas becoming brazen and going to all the international courts and claiming damages. I'll just give you a picture of how much of damages they are claiming. You'll understand the seriousness of this matter. The domestic commercial arbitration between Devas and Antariksh is of roughly 562.5 million US dollars plus interest, plus interest from 2015. The two sets of the shareholders, the Deutsche Telekom, I think, Singapore, and three Mauritius investors, have obtained awards using the 
bilateral investment treaty clauses. Each, meaning one has got 93.3 million US dollars, and the other one is 112 million US dollars. You can imagine what a scandalous agreement that was. A laid back, just get the problem out of my way kind of an approach in 2011 when they cancelled it. And even after that, when they did not appoint an arbitrator, and even after that, they did not even invoke national interest or national security, that till, till today we are fighting one after the other to save taxpayers' money, which would have otherwise gone for paying all the damages because of this scandalous agreement. It was a fraud from the first place. And I'm glad that the Supreme Court has called it out. And simultaneously, let me remind you that the first generation bilateral investment treaties, which did not have very many clauses which are important for Indian investors, was brought to an end, terminated in 2015, after Prime Minister Modi came. It's become null and void since after 2016. A model B BIT is now being negotiated with very many countries. And just to highlight to you what that first uh, generation BIT did not have, and as a result of which we are facing a lot of trouble, is it had issues of taxation also being interpreted as part of being a part of BIT. Taxation can never be part of any of the agreements. It's a sovereign domain. Today, interpretations are being given even about taxation in such matters. Second, there's no chapter on investor obligation in any of those first generation BITs. Investor has no ob obligation. He may fulfill an agreement or not, but he can claim all the rights. Whereas the model BIT today includes all that. And national security could never be invoked, probably under the way in which that was drafted. So BIT is happily being touted and interpreted against our own interest. And I'm very grateful that the Prime Minister in 2015 said, no, we'll have to redraft all these agreements. And 15, 2015, it was annulled, meaning for effective 2016. Although, of course, the duration for which it had to run, it'll run, the grandfathering will happen for those who have invested during those times. Sorry, friends, it's a bit uh, longish opening statement, but I just want to draw your attention to a few quotations from the Supreme Court's observation. I'll just highlight one or two, and I'm sure many of you all would be able to take it from the judgment itself. I'll share the copy of the judgment with you all. Para 12.A of the Supreme Court verdict. I have the copy with me. I can share the copies with you later. Para 12.8 says, a total amount of 579 rupees, Indian rupees, was brought in by Devas. But almost 85% of the said amount was siphoned out of India partly towards establishment of a subsidiary in the USA, partly towards business support services, and partly towards litigation expenses. So you bring in an investment money, you take it away and fight all the arbitration outside with that money and call that as investment made in India. Fraud. A total, and I'm quoting from para 12.8, a total amount of 579 rupees, Indian rupees, crores, was brought in, but almost 85% of the said amount was siphoned out of India, partly towards establishment of a subsidiary in the US, partly towards business support services, 
and partly towards litigation expenses. Para 12.8 again, the manner in which a misleading note was put to the cabinet, this is the Supreme Court order, the manner in which a misleading note was put to the cabinet and the manner in which the minutes of the meeting of the TAG, the technically, technical advisory group subcommittee, were manipulated highlighted by the tribunal also shows that the affairs of the company were conducted in a fraudulent manner. Another paragraph in page 127, that the officials, some of them, not all, that is my addition also, that the officials of the Department of Space and Antariksh were in collusion and that it was a case of the fence eating the crop, fence eating the crop, and also allowing others to eat the crop by joining hands with third parties. There are more such quotes which I'd like to read out, but for now, I will uh, highlight the fact and conclude my opening statement. Thank you, ma'am. Veerappa yes. Moili ji, sorry, I had one little conclusion. Veerappa Moili ji, the then minister, in February 2011, 17th in fact, says, the government cannot afford to grant, I'm quoting, the government cannot afford to grant the S-band to anyone, including Antariksh, because of strategic reasons. That's Veerappa Moili ji saying then. The Prime Minister is not at fault, nor the government is at fault. Veerappa Moili ji again. This is a cabinet decision. What is a cabinet decision? The cancelling. So, knowing very well that a fraud has happened, cancelling it after it's come out in the public, if not in full, but at least partly, and then trying also to let it go and let the government of India pay the damages for it. And you saw the extent to which government of India has to pay damages, if at all. This fraud has not been established, and I'm very grateful that the Supreme Court of India brought this matter in a comprehensive order. Now we shall definitely take this order and defend our position, government of India's position, that position where this order was cancelled even by UPA in 2011, six years after the agreement was originally signed, and make sure justice is done against this fraud which was perpetrated very much under the nose of UPA's own government. Proves clearly how Congress party works. Goes along, makes tries to make money through cronies, and when caught, behave as though nothing has happened, but the loss will be borne by government of India. No, loss shall not be borne by government of India. This is Prime Minister Modi's government. We shall fight it till the last. And this is a fraud. This has come out very clearly through the Supreme Court order. And now, it should be the Congress party's turn to explain how this was allowed, explain how the cabinet was kept in dark, and explain how it took them six full years to have this kind of a fraud perpetrated on the people of India. They should have no moral right to speak about, oh, crony capitalism, you are helping so-and-so, this is an agreement with so-and-so. The master game players in this are the Congress party, and today, with yesterday's Supreme Court order, we are able to clearly show this. The Supreme Court, in its order, very clearly talks about uh, even that, saying, will it send a wrong message 
to the investors if you pass this order about the fraud which has taken place. And the court's order that itself says that it, this shall not give a bad negative message or wrong message for investors. What it does say, and I quote here, paragraph 13.6, we do not know if the action of Antarix in seeking the winding up of Devas may send a wrong message to the community of investors. But allowing Devas, this is very important, but allowing Devas and its shareholders to reap the benefits of their fraudulent action may nevertheless send another wrong message, namely that by adopting fraudulent means and by bringing into India an investment in a sum of rupees 579 Indian rupees crores, the investor can hope to get tens of thousands of crores of rupees even after siphoning, siphoning off 488 crores of Indian rupees. You bring in 579, you take away 488, but you still think through these arbitration and court cases you can win tens and thousands of crores is a fraud. And therefore, this paragraph 13.6 very clearly says that if this is not called out, which is what it does, it calls out the fraud. If this fraud is not called out, it will also send a wrong message that you can come to India with 579 crores, take away 488 crores, but still make tons and tons of rupees by just going to the court and winning cases. That's the fraud which has been called out. I'm grateful that law has taken its own course, but shown that India is not a land where you can come and cheat the people here. Yes, sir. No? Yes, um, first of all, this order itself shows that what a fraud it has been. And in fact, the court, Supreme Court has also said, in a situation of rule of law in any country, can a fraud of this kind be entertained? And therefore, fraud of this kind cannot be entertained even in such claims. The court has said even on that, I don't want to go on reading every bit, but it is a very powerful statement that they've given. 126. Yeah, just to add on to it, I found the paragraph, thank you to the Secretary, 13.5 paragraph. A product of fraud, that paragraph other, has other lines also, but I'm reading this bit. A product of fraud is in conflict with the public policy of any country, including India. The basic notions of morality and justice are always in conflict with fraud, and hence the motive behind the action brought by the victim of fraud can never stand an impediment. Ma'am, now the question is, will this company be liquidated to liquidate this company? Number one. The other thing is, how much of the country has been claimed in the country and the government will fight it in the country? Yes, the process will start with liquidation, but I request that the secretary will be a little bit. Because the winding up order was given to the NCLT, वो उसके बाद उसको चैलेंज एनसीएलटी में हुआ और 19 जनवरी को ही एनसीएलटी ने प्रोविजनल लिक्विडेटर अपॉइंट कर दिया था 25 मई को वाइंडिंग अप ऑर्डर एनसीएलटी ने दिया था और उसके बाद वो चैलेंज हुआ तो एनसीएलटी में ये अपील भी डिसमेस हो गई थी 8 सितंबर को और सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट हैस will start. The liquidator is all, jo hai, abhi appoint ho chuka hai already. Aur iske baad mein, jo bhi kanuni prakriya hai, jo procedure hai uska, winding up ka, uski according, ye process of start ho jayega. BIT arbitration ke tehet, India-Germany BIT ka, 93.3 million 
प्लस कॉस्ट एंड इंटरेस्ट यूएस डॉलर्स है वो इंडिया जर्मनी बीआईटी का इंडिया मोरिशियस बीआईटी का 111.29 मिलियन प्लस कॉस्ट एंड इंटरेस्ट वो दूसरा है तीसरा कमर्शियल टर्मिनेशन अवार्ड बीआईटी का तहत नहीं वो अलग है वो एक बिलियन का वेल द ऑर्डर हैज कम फ्रॉम द सुप्रीम कोर्ट येस्टडे and uh, we have spent some time yesterday looking into the details of the order and that is why i have come to meet you all today but certainly we'll uh, sooner meet up interdepartmentally because it involves two or three departments concerned of the government of india and then take a call on how we want to proceed cbi and ed are going in their very clear by the acts which govern them uh, some of the assets which are not very many are in the form of fixed deposit and some properties i think that the ed and the cbi are looking into i may not be able to give you the details because today i'm looking at the company company getting liquidated and company which is getting liquidated which was a fraud in its first place in the agreement all that has got established we are looking at that side of it today but sooner post this order of the supreme court i will be holding a meeting with all those departments and seeing uh, how by, and also the law enforcement agencies to see how best we can proceed itne dur tak har level par nclt nclat aur supreme court aur har ek mein dono paksh ka sunna fir do teen vaada ke baad dobara court matter ko continue karna aur order le aana ye sab is sarkar ke aane ke baad shuru hua aur bar bar aarop lagana और वो हम नहीं लगा रहे हैं भैया आप उनके स्तर पर ही सोचिए 2005 में जो गलत समझौता हुआ दो पार्टीज के बीच में उसको कैंसिल करने के लिए छह साल बीता गया और उसके बाद उस सरकार गलत जो कैंसिलेशन के कारण बना और कैंसिल भी हुआ उसके बाद न्याय दिलाने के लिए और पैसा जनता के पैसा को बचाने के लिए उनके तरफ से कोई कार्रवाई नहीं की कम से कम आर्बिट्रेटर को अपॉइंट नहीं की गलत इतने सारे एक के बाद एक एक के बाद और उनके द्वारा इतना गलतियां हुई और हमारे सरकार आने के बाद ही हर लेवल पर एक्शन हो रही है मोदी जी के आने के बाद ही हर डिपार्टमेंट को बिठा करके इसका गहराई समझ करके एक्शन लेने के लिए हमारी तरफ से कोशिश हो रही है और इतनी सारे केसेस को हम बचाने के लिए इतनी दूर तक ले आने वाला हमारी सरकार है उनके सरकार के द्वारा कुछ भी नहीं हुआ गलती हुआ उसका कैंसिल करने का मजबूर हुआ मगर उसके बाद न्याय दिलाने के लिए कुछ नहीं हुआ क्योंकि पैसा जाने दो किसका पैसा है सरकार देगी ऐसे अप्रोच कांग्रेस का है इसीलिए बार बार आरोप में तक नहीं जाऊंगी आई विल नेवर बिकम टायर्ड of telling the truth before congress what do they say repeatedly who can speak truth to power it's one thing to go on using cliched phrases magar ek bar kya rahul gandhi ji iske vishay mein congress mein charcha ki hai itne bada ghotala desh ka itna bada nuksan congress party ke sarkar ke samay hua प्रश्न पूछा या उस ऑर्डर को कैंसिल करके फाड़ करके फेंका कुछ किया कुछ भी नहीं किया मोदी सरकार आने के बाद ही इतना प्रयत्न चल रही है जिसके वजह से आज सुप्रीम कोर्ट में हमें सफलता मिली सो so, कांग्रेस को बार बार कहने में संकोच नहीं करिए भैया बार बार आप भी पूछना चाहिए कि मास्टर ऑफ करप्शन इस हद का करप्शन कोई और कर नहीं सकते हैं भैया मैं पूछना चाहती हूं आप सब से 2014 से एक कहीं सुनने में आया करप्शन मोदी सरकार में मगर ये है लेवल ऑफ करप्शन ऑफ यूपीए और सरकार 10 साल से इसके इतना मेहनत करके कोर्ट में जीत कर आने के लिए इतना कदम उठा रही है दैट्स द लेवल ऑफ फ्रॉड दैट कांग्रेस पार्टी perpetrates and accommodates it is a fraud by congress of congress and for congress aap aise samajh lijiye is tar ka fraud nahi to nahi ho payega is tar ka fraud is because it's for congress by congress of congress aur jab tak aise 
उनका विषय बाहर आते जाएगा हम जरूर बोलेंगे उनके लेवल ऑफ करप्शन के ऊपर और इतना शेमलेस करप्शन है 